All right. First question is from Waiko. Is muscle memory a real thing? Yep. 100%. It just gets a, a real I think thing. it just seems like it because it's a weird name why people question it. Yeah. yeah. Like, how does your muscle actually have memory? It yeah. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't it's make like sense. It's its own brains in there. Yeah. 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 So if, if you've ever had a, a, a broken arm or leg or sprain, that you've had to wear a cast on or a splint, you know, for you know weeks or maybe a month or longer, and then you know when you take it off and you look, we've all experienced this. If you've had a broken leg or arm or whatever, you take the cast off, and most people, if they've never seen this before, are shocked hmm. when they look at their leg or arm. It's like so skinny, right? The muscles totally atrophied because you weren't able to move. Yeah, down regulates, right? But then when you're starting to rehab and move, you find that the muscle comes back super fast. This is an evolutionary trait. It's, it allows our bodies to kind of get back to where they were before so we could get back to living our lives. And this is true if you build muscle too. If you train and build muscle and then you lose it, it's much faster to regain it than it was the first time around. Now, well, do th- it, d- yeah, do, do the muscles just shrink down? Obviously, you're not like really like getting rid of muscle cells. Like you're, It's just that this is more of a central nervous system thing where the now it responds again and then makes it a priority. Well, wouldn't it be like, isn't it, it it's more so that, like it's a, a, a neurological pathway that's been established and been connected very well. And so that still remains the same. The atrophy happens because you're not sending the signal for it to adapt anymore. So then it, shrink, it shrinks down. But then because the pathway is already already been established really well the minute that you decide hey i'm going to go back to lifting weights again it remembers that instead of having to learn that like if you've never done a squat there's a lot of stuff going on a neurological level the body learning how to communicate in order to perform that once you've done that for hundreds thousands of times you've now established that pathway it's there it's like what you know there's the saying that uh, you know you never or you once you learn to ride a bike you can ride a bike forever type of deal mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you may not have ridden a bike for 10 years but you get back on your body remembers how to do that right away i would think that it's a very similar adaptation process for building muscle again is that you've established a pathway a very strong pathway you may even if you stop lifting weights sure the muscle atrophies because you're not sending a signal that you need muscle and it's an expensive tissue so it shrinks or whatever but then the pathway still is there that communication has still been established yeah there's a few theories that's probably plays a role um and then the other thing that they've observed is when muscle cells grow or hypertrophy the number of satellite cells um, in muscles uh, increases. And these satellite cells are important. Um, they play a role in muscle protein synthesis, which is the fancy term for building muscle and recovery. And now when you shrink that muscle, those satellite cells don't go away. So if you increase the number of satellite cells through the first round of building muscle, but then you atrophy muscle, although the muscle fiber gets smaller, those satellite cells stick around. So then when you go and lift weights again, it's like it's primed to respond faster. I mean, no joke, you know, it may, it might have took me years to gain 15 pounds of, of lean body mass on my frame, you know, working out like years. It might have took me five years of consistent, hard, good train to gain 15 pounds. I could stop working out and lose that 15 pounds in a very short period of time, you know, six months to a year, especially if my diet was bad. I'm sure that 15 pounds would be gone. If I started lifting weights again, what took me years before would take me months. Yeah, I could very easily rebuild that muscle in a very, very uh, short period of time. I remember when I had shoulder surgery. You know, as an adult, um, I had uh, my my AC joint resected a little bit on, the, on my left shoulder. I had to wear a, a you know a brace or a cast or whatever. And when I took it off, it was like totally atrophied. My shoulder was atrophied. My arm was atrophied. My pec was atrophied. All the muscles that help move the arm were totally, totally weak and skinny. And so I started working out and lifting weights and it literally within a month or a month and a half, all that lost muscle flew back on my body. So this is the good news for people who, cause I always, I've gotten this from clients like, Oh, well, if I work out and build muscle and I stop when I lose it, which yeah, of course you will, but it comes back faster. Because you gained it the first time. No, this is for all you young lifters that are just getting started or in your, the first couple of years of lifting. This is the exciting part is it does get easier. It gets much easier as you get older. The more you've been doing this, the longer you've been doing it for, the easier it is to maintain muscle mass totally. or, or rebuild it. I just had this conversation with Katrina literally yesterday. I was getting out of the shower and she was making a comment about how much my body's changed just in the last two weeks. And she's like, I just, she goes, it frustrates me sometimes to see how quick you can change. Like I say, and I was explaining to her, so you got to understand that 
you know, I barely got decades. Yeah, I barely in. got her really strength, like programming strength training right the last five years. Sure, right. she was an athlete and she exercised and she did a lot and she was in shape most of her life, but she hasn't been like really strength training until like the last five, six years of our relationship. I said, you got to know that I've got 50, over 15 years, damn near 20 years of real consistency and some like a lot of hours in the gym of lifting. And it was a long grind for that first decade to get to a point. But now that I've I've gotten to that point and I've gotten all the way up to where I've been 230 pounds and, you know, single digit body fat, my body has got used to that. So even when I fall way off, lose all kinds of mm -hmm. muscle, it doesn't take very long. If I adjust the diet, I get back in the gym and start training again. My body remembers it comes yeah, right back. I was always telling clients this because they get so frustrated and they're like new to the the experience of lifting weights. And it's like you got you can't be so hard on yourself. You, you literally it, it, that's all dependent on how long you've been in the gym and training your body in these patterns so the, the more like you train your body in these patterns the more hardwired it is the more it the quicker it responds once you know you've been off for a bit you come back that's that's it's still a loud signal that all, all of a sudden gets turned back on so yeah when you get to the point where you've put so much work in now all you have to do is maintain and that's the ideal place to be yeah as an adult now it is like it is so easy to maintain you know a 200 205 pound uh, physique, relatively muscular, relatively lean, super easy. Oh, it took my whole life to hit two hundred oh, pounds. Oh, I, you know, it took forever. Oh, when I was younger, yeah. I remember the first, you know when I when I was I was like I had to fight to stay above two hundred pounds, and the anything I, if I was just off with anything, I'd shrink really quick. But now that I maintain that for so long, it's easy. It's actually a piece of cake. I don't have to work out nearly as much or as hard to maintain the muscle that I've built uh, through the years. And there's something called mu you know, muscle fiber hyperplasia. This probably happens after years and years and years of consistent, intense training where muscle fibers actually, you actually increase the number of muscle fibers you have. So although muscle fibers shrink and grow, once you increase the number, um, the evidence suggests that the number of muscle fibers never goes away. So if you have that muscle hyperplasia going on, um, and you've been training for a long time, that makes muscle memory even more of a powerful thing. And I've experienced this with clients. I've had old, I've seen old clients who are in their 70s who had a long history of strength training and then stopped for decades. And you and can still see it. You can still mm -hmm. see it. Well, like, Ben Pikulski, he's yeah. an example of oh, this. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about that. That was one of the first things that we theorized with him when we were off air talking. He's like, this dude has literally he was trying to trying to lose a hundred pounds of <laughs> yeah. muscle. He was like literally fasting, not eating hardly anything forever, not weight training for a long time. And he still looks jacked. Yeah. You know, but yeah. that dude has put so much time under the iron for so long and for sure he's probably oh, built yeah. a bunch oh, more. Oh you look at my dad, my dad's hands and his forearms just permanently strong and muscular. Just because he's been working with them for for since he was a kid. So uh, yeah, the longer you stick with it, the easier it is to maintain, which is which is great news.